You are about to enter the House of Deliciousness, where we only create the finest recipes, such as the ever-lovable, ever-tender, ever-tasty Defiled the, the deliciousness and the sacrament that is delicious rice dumplings upon a stick with a sweetened soy sauce. That just infuriates me. I could get so mad, so mad, I could just. <sighs> Hello friends, welcome back to Cook That, where we make things tastier than the feeling that I get when all of you at home got that reference that I made. Thank you so much, I know I'm a nerd, but welcome to my show. My name's Doug Grosser, and I'm your nerdy cook. So, as you saw from our intro, we are going to make something called dongo, which is what's known as a rice dumpling. It's a very simple process to make. It's very popular in video games, anime, and especially in the Japanese culture. They are very tasty and very tender and very easy to make. So not only am I gonna show you how to make your basic dango, but I'm gonna show you how to make what's in almost every single anime. Three types of dango. You're gonna have your regular white, you're gonna have your matcha green, and you're gonna have your aiko or red bean pink. So. Let's get started. You're gonna need this key ingredient. No, it's not coagulated mayo. This, my friends, is silken tofu. It's made by milking soy cows and extracting out all that delicious soy milk and then allowing it to freeze overnight and then let it rethaw. This is silken tofu. Not the same stuff that you find in a block on most of your supermarkets. This stuff needs to be refrigerated. It is very, very soft. It has to say the words silken. Otherwise, even normal soft tofu is too hard for this application. You're gonna need about 8.8 .8 ounces of tofu. It's about a cup of silken tofu. But obviously you're gonna need more than that. So what else are you gonna get? Something that looks a little more familiar, this, my friends, is sweet rice flour, also known as mochiko. It's usually found in a box similar to this. Actually, exactly like this. Now, this is going to help bind the entire recipe together. And for those of you who are afraid of gluten, guess what? Sweetened rice flour, no gluten in it. You are going to need about seven ounces or a cup and a half of sweetened rice flour. That's it. That's your base ingredient. We'll get to the augmentation as we get to it. But first, let's make our base recipe. So, you're gonna just simply take both of them, stick them in to a mixing bowl. and work it in, of course. It would be so nice if it wasn't that easy. Hands are gonna be your best tool for the job, but you can use, of course, a rubber spatula to mix this in as vigorously as you want, which is why I like to use my hands. Now when all is said and done, it'll look very crumbly, but it should hold together into the shape of a ball. That's all you need for your basic dongo recipe. It should feel pretty soft, almost like you're pinching your earlobe. You don't want it to be too firm, but you want to make sure that it holds itself together. What else can we do? Take a third of your mixture out of the bowl. We'll make our dongo balls in just a minute. Take the next third and separate it out. This is going to be our flavor number two. This will be our flavor number three. Our next dongo flavor is going to be tea, green tea. 
specifically matcha green tea. Our third and final flavor may not be obvious to a lot of Americans who haven't delved into a lot of Japanese cuisine. But for those of you who love the Japanese buns, are pretty familiar with sweetened red beans. Nowadays, you can find it in almost any Japanese market. You can find it in two varieties. You can find it as whole beans, or you can find them as red bean paste. And that is what we'll be using, because it's a lot easier to incorporate. If you can't find red bean paste, simply follow the following steps. Put in the, your red beans. You're gonna need about two tablespoons of whole red beans. It'll give you about two tablespoons of red bean paste. Put them in and send it for a whirl. Before we continue on with our flavored dongo, let us first make our original dongo. You want each dongo to be about the size of a cotton wad. Continue with the rest of them. And your last one. Those are your base forms. Now let's begin with our flavors. Take your matcha or green tea, about a tablespoon of it, and pour it directly into your dough. Hmm. This is gonna take a while. I, I got an idea. Bust out your mini food processor. Pour all your dough directly in there. And give it a whirl. Just like so. Scrape out your dough, clean up your bowl, and while we have our food processor out, let's work on our third flavor of red bean. And send it for a whirl. If you already have red bean paste, as I do, this is when you add it. Place your lid back on, and send it for a whirl. But this looks good. Also, if your dough becomes too runny after adding red bean or your matcha tea, add a couple teaspoons of mochiko to your green tea mixture and one tablespoon at a time to your red bean mixture. This way you don't get it too dry. So once you have all of your flavors all set to go, now it's time to steam these bad boys up. You have a steamer, don't you? You don't? Ooh, I get to be creative now. What can I use? Let me ask you this. You got some lids to some mason jars? You got some of these? And you got the makings of a steamer. In addition to the pie plates, you're also gonna want some parchment paper. That way, your dongo balls don't stick. Simply put the parchment paper on, grab yourself a pair of scissors, push it down in, flip over with your scissors, poke yourself a couple of holes throughout the whole thing. Do the same for your parchment paper. And this one will be a little easier. On your first level, you just need to get it above the bottom. And each lid, you keep it above the dongo. Voila! I'm a genius! Soon, soon my plan will be complete to take over. You didn't hear that. Now this only works if you actually have a pot that's big enough to hold the pie pans. So make sure that you have that before anything else. You're also gonna need the lid. 
Now before you put this pot on anything else, make sure that there's some water underneath. Once those pie pans go in, there's not gonna be much room for water to go in. So, make sure that there's at least half an inch of water on the bottom. So put your pot over your burner and layer up your dongo. Once the last one is on top, cap your lid. And bring it to a boil. The dongle will only take 12 to 15 minutes of steaming time. You'll know it's done when you push up on it. It'll feel nice and firm, easy enough to skewer away. In the meantime, you'll want to get the ingredients for the sauce to go along with it. That means you'll need some honey, soy sauce, cornstarch, and a lemon because this is gonna be a sweet, salty, lemony, delicious sauce. Robes your delicious dongle. Well, we're waiting. Ooh, steamy. Should be nice and sticky to the touch, but firm on the inside. And that's what these guys are. Turn off the heat. Remove and begin work on the sauce that's going on top of it. So you're gonna need a two to one ratio of soy sauce to honey. In this case, we have four tablespoons or a quarter cup of soy sauce and two tablespoons of honey. To that, we're gonna bring it to a boil over medium high heat. Make sure you have standing by of your juice lemon mixed together with half a teaspoon of cornstarch. And look how quickly that went. Mix it together. Once you start seeing the edges come to a boil, add your cornstarch and lemon mixture. Keep mixing until this thing becomes nice, thick, and syrupy. Once you add the cornstarch, it's going to come to a boil and get thick very quickly. So make sure it's on medium to medium low heat. Look at that. Already done. That took all of less than 60 seconds. So once your dongo has cooled, once your dongo has cooled, the rice flour will create a nice gelatinous mixture on the outside, making it very sticky to the touch but finally able to be worked with. So, now it's time to actually work. Very simply, grab yourself a white dongo ball and skewer. Green. And finally, pink. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Finish off with the rest of your balls. There you have it. Lovely, beautiful, scrumptious dongo. Only one thing to make them better. Your beautiful sauce mixture. Just simply ladle it on. Voila. If you mistakenly have leftover dongo, don't forget, you can always eat your mistakes. Still tasty. Here, your turn. What do you think? Good, right? Still tasty. Yeah, I know, it's not sweet, it's not mochi, but it does have a little bit of that saltiness from the sauce. It's so good. You can't have it all. I gotta try some myself. The delicious Dungo is back! So, so tasty. Sweet, salty, chewy, delicious. Oh, it's back again. So tasty. Couldn't have been inspired without your help. So remember, stay awesome, stay weird. 
Thank you again for watching this episode of Cook That. Please like and subscribe down below. It really does help me, guys. If you, my viewers, really do like what I'm doing, I will commit to it. I will continue to listen to your guys' requests, and I will make some delicious stuff. We'll make some delicious stuff together. So again, remember, stay weird, stay awesome. See you around.